Notice that I have it unplugged right now. Well, what happened was these newfangled cars and their computers, ECUs, um, what happened was when I disconnected the battery originally, it reset my ECU and I had an old battery in there. Um, as you can see, this is a kind of a newer battery here. Um, I, I went out and bought a new battery um, because what I saw was um, my car was stalling out when I slowed down at an intersection and it would stall out and I assumed it was because it wasn't getting enough uh, amperage from possibly the alternator here. Check the uh, voltage across and it's getting like 19 volts across. It's actually working well. So the only other thing I can think of is that the when the ECU reset got a crappy uh, signal from the battery um, and I need to reset that and run the run the correct uh, procedure to do to do so to get a good idle. I'm at it and waiting. Um, I'm also replacing my air filter here. I have a K&N uh, in there, so I'm not going to go over the procedure on doing that. Uh, that's why that's all pulled apart, though. Uh, so I, I was waiting. I ran my car today. Uh, early around noon and um, the procedure I read online uh, requires you to have a cool engine uh, to, to do this properly so I kind of waited a good six hours for the engine to cool down the throttle body's cold so we're gonna we're gonna go from there so I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall my uh, my fuel filter I sprayed the oil the k &N oil on it uh, I'm going to just pop that right back on. Uh, it's a really quick quick and easy procedure. You just kind of undo these guys. Um, for ease, I take it off the hose, the main in intake hose here um, first, and then pop these guys out, pop the filter out, do the K&N bull crap that they tell you to do on the, on the thing. I'm going to pop it back in here, square this off, seal it, plug, uh, plug the sensor back in, and close off the hose, and that will be that. So, uh, and we'll get to the procedure as soon as I get that done. Right. Okay, so pop that guy back on. Um, it's all nice and tight. Uh, so I still have my battery unplugged. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go discharge all the uh, capacitors in the electrical system. Now, there's two ways you could do this, and I'm just going to go about doing it this way. Let me hop in my car here. Okay, there's two ways you can go about doing this. Um, you could either do it the way I'm doing, or you could disconnect the positive terminal from the battery, or disconnect the negative first, like I have. Disconnect the positive, and then touch them together for like 10 seconds um, without you know going anywhere near the battery for safety's sake, and then reconnect the battery. Um, that discharges it. What I'm doing right now is also kind of discharging it. I'm going to hit the hit the brake and hold it for about 10 to 30 seconds. And all that's doing is it's triggering the uh, rear tail lights to discharge everything. Now, the way that ECU resets, to my understanding, work. Um, here, let me turn the camera around. Hello. Um, the, the way ECU resets, to my understanding, work are uh, when the car has absolutely zero current in the electrical system, um, i.e. the batteries unplugged, that triggers, uh, the next time you turn the, the car on with a battery, that triggers the ECU memory to kick on and re hard reset itself. Um, because all the, the memory storage um, uh, was, was erased essentially. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell it to hard restart itself um, using this procedure. I've read tons of uh, online forums uh, about resetting this, uh, and this seems to be the tried and true method: is to disconnect the battery and then uh, push the pedal down, or, or like I just described, connect, connecting the two terminals um, on the car or on the battery leads. Um, there's all sorts of wacky stuff out there, you know. Tap the throttle, you know, so many times, you know, to do a little dance in your garage. Um, I think this one is the one that makes most the most sense. Um, for my particular issue, um, I read a guy on Subaru forums um, describing 
the exact situation I'm seeing and a guy that uh, helped him through the reset procedure and it seemed to work for the guy on the forum so that's the way I'm following it. What I'm going to do is uh, what I just did and then I'm going to reconnect the battery. I'm going to put the uh, engine into run position on my key, hold it there for about 10 seconds and that allows the computer system to kind of get a feel for what's going on and, and reset itself based on those parameters. And then from a cold, dead uh, engine, I'm going to start that up and I'm going to let it idle for about 20 to 25 minutes until the radiator fans kick on. And, you know, I, I, I just read the procedure and I was kind of trying to deduce what, what each function, what, what each step uh, what function each step performed and it makes sense to me that you're allowing the engine ECU to calibrate the correct idle for itself and that I'm hoping will fix my problem where once I'm you know in first second gear slowing down at an intersection I pop it into neutral my RPMs drop and what's happening is they drop way below the idle to the point where the car stalls don't want that happening so I'm hoping that once it, the computer reestablishes the correct idle on it, it will not do that anymore. And if it keeps doing that, I got another trick up my sleeve uh, that's cleaning out the throttle body. It might be just doing that because the throttle body might be dirty and it's not giving a good calibration point to start from. So that might be my other issue, and I'll cover that if need be. So, all right, uh, I'll get to that in a second here. All right, so uh, what I just did was I reconnected my battery and I'm all set there. Um, I put my uh, key in the ignition. I was careful not to touch the throttle. You don't want to touch your throttle at all during this procedure because it's gonna mess up the relearning on the ECU. So I put my uh, key in the ignition and I put it in the run position. Uh, that's the one right before the start. You don't want to crank it over. Um, and I left that there for about 10 seconds, you know, 10 Mississippis the whole way, you know, I've got to give it 10 solid seconds. And then I started my car, so my car is running. Uh, I'm going to sit here, uh, I have my garage doors, both of them opened up. Um, don't want to kill myself in the garage, so make sure you keep good ventilation if you're doing this inside a garage. So I have both my doors open and the, the garage window open. I don't know if you can see it there. I have everything open. I don't want to, you know, you don't want to kill yourself. Um, so uh, everything's open. I'm gonna let this idle. This take, um, and I'm waiting for the fans to turn on. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes for the engine to warm up enough that the fan belts turn on. So you want to give it that long, uh, just sitting in idle. So you know, just go have an uh, ice cream sandwich or something while while this is going on. So I'll be uh, I'll be back then to uh, confirm whether or not uh, the procedure worked. Um, after that 28 or 25 to 30 minutes, uh, you want to turn your car off, remove the key from the ignition completely, and wait about 30 seconds. Uh, and that just lets everything to get all the settings that were just acquired to get locked in. Uh, and then after that time point, start it up and just drive it normally for a little bit and see if it worked. So we'll see if that happens. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll tune back in uh, at that point. So engine's still running. Things are getting hot and my fans are going. Nope, they were going. Uh, so that means I can give it give it a shut off here. And we're gonna wait our uh, 10 to 30 seconds. I'm gonna wait 30 seconds just to be on the long side. Um, and then we'll uh, give it a ride. All right. Okay, so I waited the 30 seconds. I'm gonna take my car out for a spin here. And uh, we'll see if the problem went away. Now it might not fully be be solved here um, the computer might still need to learn yet but we'll we'll see uh, like I said if it can persist like over a day or so and the computer hasn't learned uh, where the correct throttle should response should be uh, I'm gonna th clean out my throttle body and I'll you know maybe maybe it'll be beneficial for uh, to do a video of a throttle body tear down and cleaning I don't know so let's uh, here we go starting it up Okay, everything started up nicely. Uh, we all set to go here in a second. My camera's mounted uh, to my, uh, I have a little phone mount here. I'm on my phone, obviously. 
So it's, it's already been warmed up, so let's, let's give it a try here. Backing out of the garage. So I'm just going to take it around the block a little bit, maybe go out for a little joy ride here and, and see how how things go. So far, I'm kind of looking at the tack here a little bit uh, while I'm driving, and so far so good. Got to watch for squirrels here. Alright, the first test is going to come up here, uh, there's an intersection here in my neighborhood, uh, just driving normal, doing about 30 and 25, and here we go, neutral, see if it drops it, and yeah, it's still kind of, still kind of not doing what I want, I just saw the, the light flick on for the, uh, for the, uh, another intersection and it didn't go on my uh, my car has an anti-skid system and I just saw a light that indicates it's off flicker on so that wasn't a good sign it's like one of the first things to go uh, if the power starts crapping out so speeding up here I'm on a faster road Doing about 45-50. Um, and at the end there's a there's a slight turn. I'm gonna go ahead and crank it up a little bit. And uh, just monitor my tachometer. I pop it in the neutral, we'll see how that goes. And it's still dropping a little lower than I want it to. Again, that it, it's not as bad as it was. You got some sunshine on you know uh, it's not as bad as it was but it's still not quite ideal and I, like I said I, I think it might be that the computer needs uh, a required learning time a couple times driving around so I'll just joyride for a little bit but uh, let you know if it gets fixed uh, my car battery or my phone battery is dying a bit so keep it short and sweet I've only been riding for a little bit um, starting to notice that the, uh, it might be just learning at different uh, different braking speeds. So I'm just kind of trying to vary it up a little bit. I'm going to hit the highway and uh, get it up to like 80 miles an hour and uh, get, off, get on an off-ramp and let the tax drop and see if it learns from, from that speed as well. That's the thing I'm mostly concerned about. I don't want my engine stalling on me while, you know, in an emergency situation, especially at high speed. So that's that's my big concern. Um, coming up to a curve here, I just I just dropped it in neutral, and I did, actually just didn't I wasn't paying attention to the to the tack, and it didn't feel like anything was was dropping. So that's a good sign. Uh, it might it might have uh, picked up the correct uh, tachometer settings and idle settings. So let me just kind of race around a curve here. Drop it in neutral. There's a dude in front of me. That, doesn't know how to turn. Yeah, see, it's it's dropping a little more, more than I wanted to, but um, let's see. I'll take it on the highway, like I said. Let it let it open up a little bit. So, all right. Well, I hope this was helpful. Uh, I'll let you guys know if anyone you know is interested. I'll let you guys know how how it turns out.